When it comes to sports videography, I don't think there's a more important piece of gear than the lenses you're shooting on. And especially when it comes to sports videography, the lens that you choose can really make it or break it for you in the type of shots you're able to get, the amount of coverage and variety you're able to shoot throughout an entire game, and can really drastically alter and change the look of your videos depending on what lens you choose to use. What's going on guys, it's Juan back here today with a brand new video and as always very excited to sit with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. If you guys are new here, my name is Juan. I'm a 24 year old sports content creator and filmmaker based out of Toronto, Ontario, currently working full time in the sports creative industry. And for all my sports videographers and photographers out there, I think we can all agree there is no one better lens for this line of work other than the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Regardless if you are a photographer or a videographer, if you're shooting basketball or if you're shooting football, I think a 70 to 200 lens it should be a non-negotiable for anybody shooting sports and if you guys don't have one of these already i would highly recommend saving up for it because it is probably the one lens that i would say is the most vital for anybody working in sports content right now now i personally own the sony 7200 f4 version of this lens and this is a non-negotiable will always be in my backpack i will always use this no matter what sport i'm using it's just a lens i truly cannot leave home without but this is actually my second 7200 f4 the first one i had i used for almost Almost two years and I bought used off Kijiji and it ended up failing me in the middle of an Argos game last summer something to do with the mount not connecting properly to the camera so I ended up buying a brand new one but it wasn't an easy choice just to go back to this one before I actually purchased this one again I actually struggled for a little bit when I was trying to decide whether I wanted to go back to older reliable with the f4 version or spend a little bit of money and upgrade to the G master version which is actually an f2.8 version of this lens and I was really lucky that a friend lent me his 7200 G master before I made the decision to purchase one. And first of all, it's a fantastic piece of glass. Don't get me wrong. It has some amazing image quality. The 2.8 aperture combined with the 70 to 200 focal length produces depth of field like you've never seen before. Great in low light, unbelievable crystal clear images. I had no complaints about using it. And so it really got me thinking if it was worth the upgrade. But after much deliberation, after much research, talking to other people, I didn't end up going with the G Master and I ended up going back to old reliable as I affectionately call her and I haven't regretted that choice for a second. But I ended up getting a lot of questions from people in my creative circle, other people I work with, and other sports creatives in general that just asked me why I didn't just shell out a little bit of extra money and get a bigger and better version of this lens now that I was in need for it. And this is exactly what I wanna talk about in this video, why I didn't upgrade to the F2.8, why I just stuck with the F4 version of the 70 to 200. I think in the filmmaking and photography world, we're often led to believe that the newest, best, and biggest piece of gear is the one you should get every single time but I think this is a perfect example where that's not necessarily true. I'm a big believer in getting the right piece of gear for the situation you're in and not necessarily going for the biggest or the best piece of gear that's available. So I'm about to give you guys my three biggest reasons why I ended up sticking with the F4 version of the 70 to 200 instead of going with the 2.8 G Master. And hopefully if you guys are in a situation similar to mine where you're debating on getting one over the other, hopefully this brings some clarity and can actually maybe help you guys make that choice. Reason number one, price. I'm not going to show Cody here. The 70 to 200 G Master f2.8 lens is expensive as not to mention that Sony dropped the Mark II version of the G Master 70 to 200, and that version is significantly more expensive than the Mark I, which was already expensive to begin with. The Mark I 70 to 200 G Master comes in at $2,699. It's not a cheap piece of glass, but it gets worse. The Mark II version of the 70 to 200 comes in at a whopping $3,499 Canadian. That is really, really expensive for a piece of glass. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think my wallet could handle spending just under $4,000 on a piece of glass. That's excluding taxes. So you're probably looking at just around $3,000 for the Mark I and just under $4,000 for the Mark II. I can't justify spending that much on just one lens. In comparison, the F4 version of this lens comes in at $1,799. Don't get me wrong, that's still a good chunk of change, but significantly less than the two other versions for the G Master. Now, looking at the Mark I and the Mark II, obviously I would go with the Mark I just based off of price point alone, but it's really hard to justify that when you look at the F4 and see the price point of $1,799, 
there's a huge difference between those two price points. And don't get me wrong, this was just under $2,000. It's still a pretty expensive piece of glass, but it's not nearly as expensive as the other two. If you choose this lens over the Mark I, you're saving yourself just about $900, which is a pretty good chunk of change to keep in your bank account. But if you choose to get this over the Mark II, you are saving yourself $1,700. Do you guys see why I ended up going with this just off of the money alone? Like throw specs and features out the window. I would much rather save myself almost $2,000 worth to get a lens that does nearly the same thing as the other two. Now at the time, I probably could have purchased the Mark I and have been okay, but I would have much rather saved the $900, get a lens that I was already very familiar with and comfortable with and use that $900 to spend on other gear, other lenses or other accessories, or even better, just keep it in my bank account and save it for a rainy day. When you pay a little bit more money for G Master level lenses, you're gonna get features that you're not necessarily gonna get in ones like this. The main one being the F2.8 aperture in the G Master versus the F4 aperture in this lens. But at the end of the day, it wasn't a massive selling point for me and I'm about to explain why. Reason number two, you don't necessarily need a lens that goes to f2.8. Now, I think a common misconception when it comes to videography and photography is that you always need to shoot at the widest open setting a lens can do. And while it may look pretty, it's not necessarily the best option for every single scenario. Especially when it comes to sports videography, there's not many scenarios I see myself cranking open the aperture up to f2.8 and I'm gonna give you my reasoning for that. For the record, this is just my opinion. This is just my style on how I like my content to look. Don't take it personally if you shoot at f2.8. And I know several people who do. This is just my opinion and my perspective. Now, obviously with a lens with this much compression, f2.8 is gonna give you some killer depth of field and some really nice blurry backgrounds. Now, while that all might look really visually appealing, it actually makes it a lot harder for you to focus properly, especially when it comes to capturing moving subjects in sports. This is because the plane of depth at 2.8 becomes a lot smaller. Therefore, the room for error becomes a lot bigger when you're trying to find focus at that f2.8 aperture. And when it comes to shooting sports, you literally have one job and that is to get the shot no matter what. So the best thing you can do for yourself is limit that margin of error. And when you shoot at f4, that margin of error when it comes to focus shrinks significantly, making it a lot easier for you to nail the focus on your shots. And when I was trying to make this decision, I was talking to a lot of sports creatives, videographers around you know, the internet, and the consensus was even if you had a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, a lot of people don't really shoot past f4 because they wanna get their shot in focus 99% of the time. Even the slightest change of focus in a shot can completely change it and maybe even ruin it and make it unusable in your videos. And so a lot of people just go with the safe option, shoot at f4 because they know they'll still have some depth of the field. They know they'll still have the compression of the shot, but they have that kind of peace of mind knowing that the odds of them getting the focus right is a lot bigger versus if they were shooting at f2.8. And if you're worried about depth of field and not really getting that really blurry and beautiful bokeh background, I wouldn't really worry about it. I, again, I've shot with this for three, four years and I've gotten some solid depth of field images from this lens alone, photos, videos. At this level of compression at a 70 to 200 you know, focal length, you're not really gonna notice a difference and people aren't gonna sit there and be like, he didn't shoot this at f2.8, there's not enough bokeh there. there, I don't really like this shot, this is trash. No one's really gonna say that. You can get some really solid depth of field from this lens alone, kind of negating the need for something at f2.8. One more point about aperture before I move on to the last reason why I got this lens, and that is low light performance. Obviously, with an f2.8 lens, it lets in a lot more light, so it's more effective in low light scenarios. Now, just in my scenario alone, I'm really lucky that I get to shoot in some really well lit venues, whether it's outdoors or indoors, I've never really had the problem of having a venue with really poor lighting, but I have been there and I know how much it sucks. However, if you're still watching this video, I'm assuming you're shooting on a Sony camera because we're talking about a Sony native lens. And if you shoot on any of the A7 series cameras, those cameras already have a really good low light performance. I myself shoot on the Sony A7S III and that thing is pretty much a low light beast no matter what lens I throw on it. And having nicely lit venues may not apply to you. You may not shoot on an A7S 
S7S3, that might not apply to you either, but this is just another reason for me not needing that F2.8 aperture where I can just settle for the F4 and be totally fine. Reason number three, size and weight. This was actually one of the biggest difference makers as to why I got the F4 version of this lens, but it's because the G Master version is a lot heavier and a lot bulkier than the F4 counterpart here. Now, I wish I had both lenses here to physically show you, but believe me, from my own personal experience, the difference was significant enough for me just to generally feel more comfortable with this lens alone. And when I was using the G Master, it just weighed me down a lot more. It was a lot harder to handle because of the size. And oftentimes when I was using it, I just wish I had this one back in my hand because it was way more compact and way more easy to work with because of the weight. The F4 version measures 80 by 175 millimeters and weighs 840 grams, while the G Master is 88 by 200 millimeters and weighs about 1,480 grams. Personally, I carry enough gear as is, so I just couldn't justify adding a heavier and more bulky lens to my kit when this is already a perfect size and compact enough to fit right in my camera bag without having to make any major changes when I'm going to shoot sports. Especially when I'm actually shooting sports, I wanna be as light on my feet as possible because I'm not just standing still on a tripod most of the time, I'm moving around the field or court trying to get the best shots possible and I don't wanna be weighed down by my gear. I notice a significant difference in the weight of my rig when I used the G Master F2.8 and it actually put a lot more stress on my body to the point when I was done shooting with it for the first time, I noticed my shoulders and my back were a lot more sore or at least more than usual because we all know that shooting photos in sports isn't actually great for your body, but I noticed a significant difference in the exhaustion and the kind of soreness I had around my body after shooting with a bigger and heavier lens. Also, with a heavier lens, it's gonna be a lot harder to keep steady, especially if you find yourself shooting handheld. When you're holding a heavier camera package for a longer time, your hands are eventually gonna to start to shake, and by then, it's pretty much game over at any hope for having stable handheld footage. Obviously, you could add things like a tripod, a monopod, or a hi-hat to sit the camera on top of and kind of negate that issue, but for me and my style of sports videography, I love being handheld, I love being mobile, so just having the extra weight and potentially throwing off my stable footage was a big no-no for me. On the flip side of that, I think the 70-200 f4 is the perfect size and dimensions for any kind of 70-200 zoom lens. It's not too big, it's not too heavy, it's not too cumbersome, it fits perfectly in my bag, and honestly, when I used the 70-200 G Master, I was just immediately turned off by the weight, by the size of it. This is something I was comfortable with, this is something that works for me and my environment and my style of shooting, so size and weight was a really, really big deal breaker for me when it came back to purchasing this lens once once again. In conclusion, if you guys are thinking about getting the 70-200 f4 lens or the bigger and better G Master f2.8 version of the lens, I'm going to be real with you guys, just save yourself the cash. You are really not losing much in terms of features or quality when it comes to sticking with the f4 version. Like I said, I've used the f2.8 G Master and it's a fantastic lens with a lot of strengths, but unfortunately for me, a lot of those strengths were actually its biggest downfall and it just didn't really fit me or the situation I was in, which led to my choice to just stick with this one. Like I said, I did get to use the F2.8 G Master on several occasions and it has a lot of strengths. It is truly a great piece of glass, but I think a lot of those strengths were actually its biggest downfalls for me and just the current situation and the F4 just met my needs a lot better and it was something I was already used to in the past. One general piece of advice though, if you're ever going to make a major financial investment on say one of these lenses that I talked about today or a camera body or pretty much any piece of gear that's over $1,000 or $2,000. I would highly recommend renting it out first or borrowing it from a friend or a colleague who has it and giving it a try that way without making a major financial investment. That way, if you realize that it's actually not what you're looking for or it's not really fitting what you need, you can avoid spending that money altogether and having a major headache at the end of the day. And that brings us to the end of today's video. If you guys have made it to this point so far, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed today's video, if you guys gained anything from it, please consider leaving a like down below. And if you're new here, if you enjoy this type of content, all also consider subscribing as I would really, really appreciate it. And feel free to comment down below what lenses are you guys using right now? What's your favorite piece of glass? Or what are you guys hoping to buy in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you guys. And that does it for me in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.